In this video, we're going to take a look at the basics of creating a conveyor belt system in Blender. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in one of our previous videos on particle systems in Blender, there was a question that came up about how we would turn that into a conveyor belt system. Now, it's important to understand that there are limitations to anything that we're going to do here. And as always, the end result of this video is not going to be a nice render or an animation that we're going to output, but we're going to just take a look at the basic settings that we need to understand when trying to work with a particle system like this. So to get started, we first want to create a new design. So we're going to go to new in general. I'm not going to save what I have on the screen here, but we're going to start with the general design that you have anytime you open up Blender. Now I am using pretty close to the latest version of Blender, which I think is 3.3 at this point. Uh, it really doesn't matter if you've gone all the way back to say 2.8 or so, the user interface should look fairly similar. So um, whatever version of Blender that you are using for the past couple of years probably is still going to work the same. But it is important to know that you should stay fairly current with the releases of Blender because new functionality is always added. At this point, we're going to talk about some very basics. So I want to take this camera. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to take this light and get rid of it. Now, in this video, we're not going to go over all the nuances or small settings that we do in particle systems. If you want to, you can go ahead and check out the previous video that we did on that. It was about 45 minutes long, just looking at basic particle systems. In this case, we're going to take a look at the setup of just a basic particle system. We're going to kind of speed through some of the settings and we're going to talk about some of the limitations. So to get started, I want to take this cube. I'm going to use G and Z on the keyboard and pull that up and out of the way. That is going to be the object that we're going to turn into our particle system. Next, we're going to go to add mesh plane. And we're going to scale this up. So S on the keyboard and Y, we're going to scale it up and we're going to just make a plane. I'm going to also scale it in the X direction just a little bit, make it a little bit wider. I want to add another mesh plane. In this case, I'm going to use G and Z and pull this up. This is where our cubes are going to drop out of. I'm going to scale it down. This is going to allow me to keep those cubes coming out of a much smaller area. The next thing that we want to do is we want to talk about the different pieces of this puzzle that we need in order to set this up. The first thing that we want to do is move this off to the left. So G and Y, I'm going to just place it over here. What we're going to do is animate that plane, which is going to be our belt using keying. Keying in the timeline is going to be important. First, I want to rename this as my belt just so I know what it is. This other plane, I'm going to double click and call my emitter and the cube I'm just going to leave as cube. So with our emitter selected, we're going to go to our add modifier and we're going to create a particle system. Now there are quick settings that you can use to create different types of particle systems, but we're going to go basically one step at a time going through each of these. As soon as we create our particle system, it's going to start flooding the scene with all of these particles. Now at this point, these are just graphical representations of the particles. We haven't attached anything to them yet. The first thing that I want to do is I want to reduce this number, let's say to six. I want to just drop a couple every second. I want to just drop one at a time. So that way it's more representative of dropping something on a conveyor belt as it's going. The next thing I want to do is make sure that the lifetime of these particles is going to be the entire length of my animation. It's going to be 200 frames. Then we need to talk about the object that we're dropping. So that comes in our render settings. And we need to change the render as type to object. And then we need to select the object, in this case, the cube. Now it's automatically going to reduce the size of that cube. So I'm going to increase the scale to something that looks a bit more realistic for something we're dropping on the conveyor belt. For me, that looks like about 0.93 as the scale. So now you can see we're dropping these boxes onto this conveyor belt every second or so. The next thing that we need to do is we need to think about how it's going to interact with that. So on the belt, we're going to go to our add modifier and we want to create a collision. So if we turn on collision, now you can see that these objects are starting to bounce. In order to control this, we need to go into our settings for this, this collision system and we need to start adjusting some of these settings. Now, a couple things that we can do is we can turn up the stickiness 
The stickiness will allow these to just drop and stick directly into that plane. We can turn this back off and we can increase the damping. Now the damping will slow the particle down as soon as it hits. But here is where this important limitation comes into play. We're trying to drop these cubes onto this plane. Now, normally if we just create a rigid body, it would work just fine. However, when we're talking about particles, it's looking at the center point of that cube. It's not going to take into account mesh collisions when we're talking about cubes like this. So it is a limitation, and if you want to use this system to fake a conveyor belt or something like that, likely you'd have to fake it by creating your objects below the plane based on the size of your objects. Now, obviously that's not gonna work if you're sending a bunch of random sized particles. There are ways that, as I understand, you can do it by converting your particles to meshes, but again, outside of what we're really looking at here. So we have some of the basic properties. The next thing that I wanna do is I want to pause my animation and back at this initial frame, I'm gonna select my belt I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard and create a location keyframe. Then I wanna move this to frame 200. I wanna move my object, so G, Y, and move it all the way to the end here, and hit I again to create another location keyframe. So now if we play, we can see that our belt is moving from left to right over those 200 frames but the objects are not moving with it. And the reason for that is because we haven't turned on any friction. It thinks it's perfectly slick and nothing's sticking to it. So if I turn friction all the way up to one, then each of these objects is going to be dropping down and they're going to be moving along in whatever position they hit the belt. Now you will notice that there are some gaps. These objects aren't going to be interacting with each other. In, the, in this case, again, the cubes are not going to really be able to look at the, the mesh or the size of the object and how they interact. But this gives you sort of a basic idea or understanding of how that works. With that said, let's talk about another way that we could do this. So I am going to start a whole nother file. So again, new general, not going to say what we did here. I'm going to get rid of the uh, camera and the light. We don't really need them. And I'm gonna just move this up using G and Z. I actually wanna rotate it a little bit just to make it a little bit more interesting. We're gonna add a mesh plane, scale it up in Y. And I'm gonna go ahead and scale it up in X as well. Now you can use different keystrokes, for example, uh, Shift and Z to omit scaling in Z. Because this is a plane, we could just scale it out and it would be fine. I'm gonna use G and Y and move it to the left. And then I'm gonna use I to insert a keyframe for location. I'm gonna to go to frame 200 or so. I'm gonna go G and Y again. And once again, give it a location. So now if we play this through, what we should see is that the plane moves from left to right, just like it did in our previous example. However, now we need to think about this cube dropping. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to turn this into a rigid body. As soon as we turn it into a rigid body, its type is going to be set to active, its mass is one kilogram, and it's dynamic, which means that if we play through, it drops based on gravity. Notice that it went directly through that plane. What we need to do is we need to turn this plane into a collision. It needs to know that it's a collision plane. However, that's not the only thing that really works here. Now, the way that this actually works is we need both of these things to be rigid bodies. So if we turn this plane into a rigid body, both of them start falling. If we go back and look at our settings, for our rigid body settings for this plane, we're gonna go ahead and turn off collision and change the rigid body setting to passive. As soon as we play this, then the objects start interacting. Now part of the reason that they don't slide together is again, we haven't really told it what's happening with, uh, with friction. It doesn't really know what's going on. We can change the shape of the collision and you can see that it's causing it to bounce around a little bit, but we haven't really told it anything about the way that we want them to, to sort of interact. So if we look here, there is a friction number and as soon as we turn on animated, what this will allow it to do is it'll allow it to animate that friction value. Now you'll notice as soon as we clicked animated, nothing is happening. It's not dropping anymore. If we turn off animated, you can see that it's now falling back down to the plane. 
If we click on the plane and turn animated on for the plane, this passive rigid body, as soon as the object drops and falls down, what we're gonna see is that now it's moving with the plane. It's bouncing around a little bit and typically what you would wanna do is you would want to uh, think about your settings for things like friction. I'm gonna go ahead and start back at the beginning and, and how you want these objects to interact. But this is a way that you can get a realistic motion by dropping the cube down onto the plane while the plane is moving. This, however, doesn't take into account the particle system. So we have this disconnect between how these collisions are detected and how it might be easy to set up something like this. Now the particle systems won't really take into account a rigid body object from the emitter. It doesn't take those properties over. It's not gonna be looking specifically at the properties of the mesh behind that object. But again, these are two different ways that we can look at creating this conveyor belt system. One way is much easier to set up and you can fake it by using things like your object offset from whatever your collision plane is. And this method here, when we're talking about rigid body contacts or collisions, we can really use the dynamic relationship between the cube, the friction and the animation to get a more realistic approach. So this might be something where if you're setting up an animation, maybe you have a conveyor belt in the foreground where it's important that you have a little bit more realism. And then you maybe have a lot of them in the background where using a particle system and animating that, rendering it really far in the background can be a valid choice for you to, to go the route of using that particle system. So once again, this came based on a question in one of the previous videos. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you want to join the Discord server, please send me an email, support at caducator.com. We're looking at design in general. Obviously we cover mostly Fusion 360 on this channel, but we try to dive into other topics as well. So if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.